Another sparkling day on the Riviera, with a mandatory super yacht or two in view. This is the beautiful rock brune Cap Martin region, just around the corner from Monte Carlo. I'm on the trail of the famous modernist architect Le Corbusier and the little known but equally extraordinary designer and architect, Eileen Gray. Jean-Louis is my intelligent, quietly spoken guide and France's foremost Eileen Gray expert. We're on our way to E1027, a house designed by Eileen Gray. With a name like E1027, I'm expecting something a little different from the opulence and frivolity of Villa Refusi. Leading me through a tunnel of Mediterranean scrub, Jean-Louis explains how the now relatively unknown Gray was a major creative force in the 1920s modernist movement. I'm met with the determined lines and stark, chalky white paint of an unmistakably modern house. The steel and glass box-like shape conjures up the 1970s hillside mansions of Hollywood rather than 1920s Europe. E1027 is a forgotten jewel of French modernism. Overlooking the Bay of Monaco, it was originally designed as a summer residence by Gray for her friend, Jean Badovici. Despite its architectural importance, it fell into disrepair in the 90s and was taken over and vandalized by squatters. It was left derelict and unloved until finally the French government declared it a French national cultural monument in 1999. It's now being restored to its former glory under the careful and appreciative eyes of Jean-Louis. So who was this talented miss? In terms of talent and innovation, Eileen Gray was a Coco Chanel of furniture design. Her furniture designs possessed the same sense of timeless style and sophistication, and like Chanel, are imitated today. In 2009, this dragon's armchair, designed by Gray in the 1920s, was sold at the auction of Yves Saint Laurent's art collection for 21.9 million euros. For those in the know, her furniture are prized gems in their collection. Originally from an aristocratic family in Ireland, Eileen spent much of her youth studying fine arts in London and Paris before discovering a passion for lacquer work. She invented blue lacquer and her groundbreaking lacquered wooden panels, which also feature in E1027, would become one of modern furniture's most stylized features. As I wander E1027, I keep having to remind myself that it was built almost 100 years ago. With its minimalist, clean, simple lines and blend of function and innovation, this house is both practical and beautiful. Jean-Louis explains some of the architecture objectives behind E1027. Donc la, la maison a été construite pour euh, une, une personne qui est sportive, c'est-à-dire quelqu'un qui aime bien vivre, qui aime bien recevoir, mais qui aime aussi le, le sport. Donc on voit c'est une maison aussi qui est ouverte. On a ouvert tous les, les espaces. C'est en 1929, c'était quelque chose qui allait contre l'architecture de la Méditerranée où on fermait les, les, les fenêtres qui donnait sur le soleil. Ici, il est là, ouvert au soleil. Vous voyez, donc c'est une, une démarche totalement euh, différente. Et une chose importante, c'est qu'elle a construit la maison de l'intérieur vers l'extérieur. C'est-à-dire, elle a pensé d'abord au bien-être des gens, au mobilier, et ensuite, elle a fait les, les murs. C'est une chose importante, ça. Gray took furniture design to a whole new level in this house. It became the nucleus of the house design and informed the actual architecture. A very different approach to modernist architecture at the time, which was effectively design the outside first, then worry about the inside. For her, the furniture was part of the house. E1027's original furniture, like the Bebendum chair, 
and the adjustable coffee table have now become Art Deco furniture icons. But when this house was built, they were one of a kind. Arguably the most famous modernist architect and designer of our time, Le Corbusier, greatly admired E1027. In it, he would have seen references to his famous theory, Five Points of a New Age Architecture. The Swiss-born architect became a frequent visitor to E1027, and he was so inspired by the minimalist masterpiece that he decided to leave his own mark on the villa by painting frescoes on the interior walls one of which included kissing women. Grey was horrified. She felt the murals compromised the house's design and ambience and declared them an act of vandalism. I thought she was being precious, but now that I'm here, I can see how boldly out of place Le Corbusier's paintings would have been. Incensed, Gray left the villa and never returned. Le Corbusier, however, was undeterred. He was said to be obsessed with the house and returned frequently to visit. E1027 intrigued and inspired Le Corbusier and there's no doubt it influenced some of his own work. Some would even come to mistakenly attribute E1027 as one of his own designs. <laughs> 